All right, so here we have, uh, this is the image I took of your idea. So I'm not sure if this is to scale, but I'm gonna do mine to scale so that you know the measurements that, that you should be using. So I'm just gonna use this as a reference point and then I'm gonna start drawing over here. So start with the center out. The center um, hole for the bearing should be a total of 23 millimeters. So that's a radius of 11.5. So it's half of the diameter, so 11.5 millimeters and then we're going to create something that is on the outside here so you have the inside circle now i'm going to make the outside circle i'm just going to kind of eyeball it because i'm not sure what that measurement is looks like it might be like five millimeters something like that so if i go five millimeters bigger I'm trying to reference the center this is one thing that Sometimes it takes a while. If you scroll over the edge, sometimes you can get the center to stick. There we go. There's another trick that I'll show you a little bit later. So you'll be doing 16.5, which is five millimeters bigger than the previous measurement. That looks pretty good. All right, so I want to get rid of this center part because that is going to eventually be a hole. So when you just select this surface and press delete on the keyboard. Now I'm going to push pull this out. And if you want the same um, height as the bearing, that is seven millimeters. I'm just going to go seven enter. So now I have that center part. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to make some snap point. Actually, one of these things that we haven't really discussed in class, but it is really important. You can only print things that are solid. So right now, this looks like it's a solid, but it's actually a bunch of surfaces. There's a top surface. There's an inside surface, an outside surface, and then there's one on the bottom. So this little guy right here is entity info. This tells you when you have something selected what it is. So right now I have a face selected. If I select just a line, it will say that's just a circle. There's another face surface. So these are not solids yet. They're just a bunch of surfaces that are basically touching each other. But we haven't said we want this to be a solid yet. So the way to convert it to a solid is to either make it into a group or into a component. So I need to select all these surfaces that are touching and make a component or make a group. So I'm going to just draw a window around these objects. It's going to select everything there. And then right click and make component doesn't matter what the name is at this point. I'm just going to click OK. So now I have a solid component. So anything that is a solid, we can print. So right now, you could print this, but we're not done yet. So the next thing we're going to do is because you have uh, four little arms that are sticking out, I'm going to make what I call a snap point at each of these points on um, the ring that I've already created. I'm going to use just some lines to do that. So I want to be symmetrical and kind of plan out what I'm doing. So I'm going to first use just the line tool. And I want, want to reference the bottom. So I'm going to try to find the center if I can again. There we go, there's a center. I'm going to draw straight out until the edge, the bottom edge. Actually, I'll go to the outside edge. So as I'm drawing on the bottom, I'm actually going to orbit to see the bottom. I'm going to be on the red axis. I'm going to go out to the end point. And then I'm going to go up the side. 
So I want to be on the blue axis this time up to the edge. Now I'm going to go and do four different points. I'm going to go from the center point again on the red axis to the opposite side this time. And then up again Then I want to make another line over here from the center out on the green axis. I'm going to go ahead and do this one since I'm here and go from this point on the green axis out to that edge. And then make a line from this point up to the edge. Then I'm done. I, I want to get out of this tool, so I'm done drawing. Just press escape and then go up here on the blue axis up to the edge so these will come in handy in just a little bit it'll all make sense so the next thing is i want to do the little arm thingies first thing i might want to do is just check how much distance i have between the center and the edge, so the farthest out point. We talked about this in class, how that should be 50 millimeters maximum and more likely like 45 to be comfortable <clears throat> in your hand while you're spinning it. The one I showed you in class, the, the one I made is 48 millimeters. So I'm going to click here and just measure out this is the measuring tape. So I get to 50. Let's go out to 50. Let's just type it. 50. Enter. So that's the farthest out I can go. So let's just say that that we don't ever want to go farther than that, and possibly you want to go in closer, if possible. So I'm going to do a circle next and just get an idea of what would look good. That looks a decent size. That's a eight and a half millimeter radius. So that times two would be 16, 17. 17 millimeters across. So let's do 8.5. Hold on. I'm just going to draw it over here somewhere. 8.5. Enter. And then this is going to be, I want to attach it to the edge. So I'm going to draw a line here. Actually, let's go ahead and make this a thingy. I'm not sure if you want this to be the same thickness. So I'm going to show you how to do it a different thickness if you want to be different. So I'm going to go ahead and push pull this up. And let's say you want it to be five millimeters. It's a little bit thinner than the center. All right, so let's say that's good. And I'm going to go ahead and make this a component so it's a solid. So I'm going to select everything there, make component. So, so far I've made this inside ring and I've made one of these little things here that's going to stick on the end. And then I'm going to go ahead and make another guideline. Try to reference the center and draw straight across on the red axis. And I'm going to drag down here. All right, so now I have a snap point right here. 
at the end that I can grab this item I'm going to click here to grab it here and move it and attach it right here. So I'm going to use the select tool first and select what I want to move. I grab all of this and I'm going to use the move tool, grab it right here and move it till it snaps to the end of that guideline. All right, so what I need now is something that connects these two together. And one other thing that we're going to look at in just a minute is the fact that this is smaller. And you probably want that to end up in the middle. So it's going to be floating in the middle straight out. So right now it's sitting on the ground, and this needs to be moved up. So it's equal distant away from the floor as it is from the top of this. So we'll cover that in just a minute. What I want to talk about next is what kind of arm do you want to have here? This could be a rectangle, a simple rectangle, could be an oval, could be a circle. So this, viewing it straight on, I'm imagining maybe you want this to be an oval shape. Just make it interesting. So we're going to draw an oval, and so that's found here. And can you draw an oval? I don't think so. How would you draw an oval? Let's just draw a rectangle, and then we'll create some curves. So right now, if I draw a rectangle, I'll be drawing it from a corner out. And I want to draw it from the center out so that I can align it in the midpoint and have it nice and centered. So in order to draw, I want to be drawing on the red axis perpendicular to that. So if you orbit, it's automatically going to draw a rectangle that way. See how that's perpendicular to the red axis? And if you want to make sure it's that way, you can um, use your arrow button, and you want the right arrow. That will make sure it's aligned to that axis. And then I can't see my notes down here because this thing's in the way. If you want to draw a rectangle from the center out instead of from a corner, you click click the control key one time. So that's corner, I can see, and that's center. So now I want to click on the midpoint, and I'm going to try to go out. Let's see. That looks a little bit large, but let's try that. This is a 10 by 3. 10 would be good. So let's do 10 by 3. 10 comma 3. Enter. So now that's perfectly centered right there. And if you wanted to make an oval shape, you would have to use some curves. Now I'm going to use a curve and an arc. That's what I meant to say. And let's see if I can find a midpoint. Yeah, that'll work. So there's a nice midpoint here that I can click. I'm using the two-point arc, which is the easiest one to use. And I'm going to simply click here, click on the opposite side in the midpoint, and then drag it. Um, so it says half circle. So that's not as quite as big as 10 millimeters, but let's see how it looks. I'm going to do it on the other side as well. Click here, click here, and then go out to half circle. Now I'm going to get rid of these lines that I don't need.
So now I have a shape that I can use to push pull out. I can use a push pull. And these two sections, because there's a line in between, is dividing the two surfaces. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that line real quick. All right, so now I'm going to push pull this out. And I want to just make sure that it's intersecting through this thing here. So about right there is good. And because I placed it on the end of this thing, there's actually a little bit of gap right there, see? So it's attached to the face or where this thing ends but then the edges are not attached at all. So I want to actually, after I make this a component, I'm going to move it in. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to move everything, you know, both of these solids out of the way for a second. So I'm going to select them first. I'm going to select that and then hold the shift key down, select this, and then I'm going to move it out of the way. So I'm just going to click here and remember how far I moved it and which axis. So I'm on the green axis. I'm going to move it 50 millimeters away. So five, zero, enter. That way I can move it right back once I'm done making this component. So I want to make this thing that I just made a component. So I need to select all the surfaces. So there's quite a few here. I can actually get rid of this line, so I can delete that. And there's probably one on the bottom too. I'm just cleaning this up before I make it a solid. So now what I need to select are the surfaces. So I can click and select them holding the shift key to add. One more surface over here then right click and make component. So now this should be a solid, but it's not. It says component. So there's something extra in here that I don't want. Looks like there might be an extra line there. So let's go ahead and instead of selecting individual things, let me see what happens if I delete this. Yeah, we don't want to do that. So instead of selecting individual faces, I'm going to go ahead and draw a box around it. So I'm going to draw a box. And I don't want the lines, so I need to zoom in. Hold the Shift key down and deselect those by clicking on them. And then click on that guideline too. Now let me see if I right click the, if this will make a component that's solid. It still says component, but not a solid. Oh, I have an extra line in there. So I'm going to undo that step. So let's go ahead and Draw the box again. Deselect the lines. You don't want to have any extra lines in it or else it won't be a solid. And make component. OK, yeah, now we have a solid component. That's what we're looking for. So now this is a solid. And I'm going to move these two items back. So I'm going to use the select tool first, select both of these items. And then I moved them 50 on the green axis. So click anywhere to grab it. As long as I'm moving on the green axis, then I'm going to type in 50 and then enter to move everything back where it was. So now I have three solids, this solid, this solid, and this solid. 
what I need to do, like I was saying earlier, is make sure that this is inside the other solid. So I want to make sure that's all the way inside. That's why I made it a little bit longer over here so I can move it. So I'm going to click on it, use the move tool, and make sure I'm moving along the red axis. So I just want to move it straight across. And it looks like two millimeters will do it. So I'm going to do two, enter. I just want to make sure that it's all the way inside. There's nothing, no blank spaces. Same thing over here. It's all the way on the inside. No blank spaces. All right, so now the next thing I need to do is um, talk about what we are talking about earlier. So right now, this is not in the middle. It's sitting on the floor level, same as this one. But we intentionally made it shorter. So in my mind, I think this should be like this should be in the middle of this. So there's a couple ways you could do it. You could make a snap point, or we could do some math. So it's easier to do the math because we did we extruded this five millimeters. If you're not sure, you could just go ahead and measure it. So straight up. I'm just looking down there at the length that's five millimeters. And this is seven. So this is a difference of two. So you'll want a millimeter of blank space on the bottom and a millimeter of blank space on the top. So that means I need to move this up one millimeter. So I'm just going to grab this item, use the move tool. Make sure I'm moving straight up on the blue axis, and then just type a 1 for 1 millimeter. Enter. So now that should be straight in the middle of that. All right, so now I want to make three more of these. So what I could do is multiply these rotate them, and then attach them, which is the easiest thing to do. So I'm going to go through that really quickly. Um, before I do that, I have two solids that are all, eventually all of these solids will be joined together. So I'm just going to join these two together to make this next step easier. So I have two solids. Eventually you want all of this to be one connected solid. So to join solids together, you're going to use these tools over here. This is the solid editing tools. The first two would work for what you want to do. Um, outer shell and union both do a similar thing. Union allows you to have voids on the inside of your solid, whereas um, outer shell fills in all the voids. You don't have any voids, so it doesn't matter which one you use. So let's go ahead and do outer shell. So you're going to select one solid and then select the other solid. It's going to join the two together into a solid group. So now that's all one thingy. So now we're going to copy this. So I'm going to go to the Move tool. Actually, I need to select it first. I want to select this item because I want to copy it. Use the Move tool, click Control to get into copy mode, click anywhere to grab it, and then just place it somewhere. Then I'm going to copy it and again, so I'm going to click Control and copy that copy. And then I need one more, so I'm going to click Control again and copy it again. So now I have a total of four arm thingies. And these, each of these needs to be rotated before I can put it on this donut thing. So I'm going to use this one first because it's kind of sticking out here. And I want to rotate it. So I'm going to use this rotate tool. I want to rotate it on this axis. 
So think of it as the face of a clock. And I want the face to be this way. I don't want to rotate it this way. I don't want to rotate it this way. I want to rotate it this way. So it's straight up looking from the top down. So you can lock it into place by, uh, let's see, selecting the arrow key that's up. That will make sure that's on the right plane. Then I can click any reference point I want to. That's my pivot point. And then I'm just going to grab any other point along this line. It doesn't really matter where you grab it. So like a hand of a clock, you're just saying I want to use this as my like minute hand and then rotate it around along that plane. So we want to rotate it 90 degrees. So you can either, it will snap to 90 degrees, but you can also type it in just to make sure. So nine zero enter. So now this one is going to snap to this over here. Before I do that, I need to make a snap point. So I'm going to use the pencil tool here and just draw a line. If I can find a midpoint, it might not let me find a midpoint. It says end point. So let's go inside this component real quick. I'm going to double click. I'm going to add a line. I think this adds a line to every single one. Let's see if that's true. No, oh, it just edited that one. Okay, good. So that should be at the midpoint there, I'm, I think. Let me delete that because I don't remember if I drew it. From the midpoint. Yep, there's a midpoint there. So midpoint to the other midpoint. Now I need to snap this thing into place. So before I do anything, let me just show you. It does say solid group, even though there's an extra line in there. Awesome. So we're going to leave that line there and use it as a snap point. We're going to move this item now into place. So use the move tool. Grab it from this midpoint and snap it to the other midpoint that's on this donut here. Should be a midpoint there. And you may not remember, but we moved this in two millimeters to get rid of that gap. So I'm going to move this in along the green axis, two millimeters, enter. So now I have two of these things in place. So now I need to rotate some more of these guys. So this will allow me to rotate this item grab it from this corner. I'm just going to speed up the process since you know what you're doing now. This one's going to be 180 degrees. Then I need to go in here, draw a line from the midpoint to the midpoint. That's not right. It says end point. We're going to use it. All right, now we're going to move. So let me get out of here. Select this guy. Move. Midpoint. Over to the midpoint over here. I need to move it along the red axis. Two millimeters. Enter. Last one. Actually, let me scan.
escape out of that. Ninety degrees. Go inside here. Draw a little line. And I'm going to select this thing, move it from that midpoint over to this midpoint, then move it along the green axis, two millimeters, enter. All right, so now all of these arms are in place. And the last thing you wanted to do is add some shapes on top. Now the triangle, the square, and the circle are all gonna be very easy. The X basically make two rectangles, or I don't know how exactly you wanna make that, so I'll leave that up to you. But I'm gonna show you how to do the other shapes. So the easiest thing is to use the center point on these circles. So to find the center point, I usually just try to make a line. I'm just going to click on the outer shell part and then draw a line straight across. That's just my center point there. So let's say the first one here is a square. So I'm going to use a square. And I want to draw it from the center out. So I'm going to use control to draw from the center instead of from a corner. The end point there and I'm just looking at my measurements to what looks good to me so I'm thinking maybe a seven millimeter square so seven by seven enter so there's my shape and now I need to push pull this to make it a solid before I do that, I'm just going to get rid of this line. And see how, I don't know how deep you want it to be. Maybe to match this top, that'll be one millimeter. Let's do a little bit taller, so let's do two millimeters. So there's one shape. Then let's go ahead and get, again, and get the center point. And the triangle is probably going to be the hardest one because you have to use a different tool. So the polygon tool is an easy tool to use. It's like a circle tool, but you can determine how many sides you have. So I'm going to click on that polygon tool. And in the instructions, it says use Control plus or Control minus to change the number of segments. So right now I have six segments. So I need to reduce that by holding control and using the minus button. So now I'm down to four sides. Now I'm down to three sides. And now I just click. And I'm not sure if this triangle needs to be. So in your drawing, it's facing upward this way. So we're going to do a radius of Say six. That looks pretty close to good. So now I'm going to delete the lines here. No longer need those. Push pull this up two millimeters. So there's two shapes. The circle is going to be easy. You know how to do that from the center out. So let me show you what to do now that you have all these shapes. These are not solids. These are still surfaces. So you need to make these solid somehow. So it's really hard to do that because 
the bottom surface is hidden because it's on top of another surface. So I can't select that surface. So to make this easier, I'm just going to move what I have done out of the way. So I'm going to click on the select and just select the four arms and the center part. I'm going to move it away. So I'm going to use the move tool. Click anywhere. I'm going to move it along the red axis and I want to move it out of the way. So I'm going to use 100 millimeters, 100. All right. Now these are left here so I can make them into solids. So I'm going to use my select tool. Select all of this first, right click, make component. Then I want to select this. I don't want the line, so I'm going to shift, click on that. I don't think I need this line either. And then I right click, make component. So that's a solid component there. You can see that in the entity info. And this is a solid component. So both of those are solids now. So now I'm just going to move everything back into place. Or actually, I could move these over 100. Either way, same difference. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of this. Use the Move tool. Move it over 100. So I'm imagining that you've taken the time to do the other two shapes, and those are both solids. So now we're just going to put it together one final time. So we're going to use the solid editing tools, so the outer shell. And if you want to, you could also add shapes to the bottom. I don't know if you want to do that, but now that you know how to do it, you could do that yourself. So once you're done, we're just going to combine solids. I'm going to choose a solid here and combine it with the next solid. They have to be connected, touching each other. I'm just making sure that after I do that, that everything is a solid group. It still is. So now that one's already selected. So I'm going to join it to this group. And then that's still a solid group. So far, so good. I'm going to join it to the next arm over. And then add this one and add the shape on top, then add this arm. And that is your fidget spinner. I'm just going to move it out of the way so there's no lines there interfering. Let's move it over, say, 150. And this would be the object that you would print.